This video will go over the Earth and Environmental Science major, however it will primarily focus on the Earth Science major, its concentrations, labs, and jobs you can expect to obtain with this degree. The terms earth science and environmental science are often used interchangeably, and although they have a significant amount of overlap and are quite similar, it is important to note that they are different fields of study. Earth science has more of a focus on geology, water, and soil, whereas environmental science does cover those aspects as well, but is more centered around ecology, biology, and the environment. Earth science combines many fields into a unified physical science and covers topics such as the atmosphere, climate, ecology, soil science, environmental earth sciences, some aspects of geology, geophysics, plate tectonics, and hydrology. In your first year, you will set the foundation for your learning by taking an introduction to earth science course. This course will serve as a survey course for the fundamental processes of earth science and will cover how geological, geographic, soils, and human factors all play a role in shaping the earth. For example, if you think about how humans shape the earth, one concept that probably comes to mind almost immediately is our role as humans in climate change. Despite small populations of skeptics, there is a vast scientific consensus that our activities are changing the global climate and ultimately changing the landscape of the earth and impacting the organisms that inhabit those environments. This course will be filled with fundamental earth science concepts in conjunction with vocabulary terms you will be required to memorize so that you are able to understand the language of earth and environmental science. For example, one concept you will study is an introduction to hydrology and the hydraulic cycle, which is a scientific term for describing the four stages in the water cycle. These four main stages are evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and the collection cycle. Knowing the movement of water will be useful in your knowledge of the main water reservoirs, which are the ocean, ice, atmosphere, ground, lakes, and man-made bodies of water. On an exam, you might be asked to describe each step of the hydraulic cycle and then also identify and label different bodies of water. Next, let's talk about erosion, which is a natural process that reshapes the geographical landscape. Have you ever seen in person or seen pictures of the Colorado River and admired how it snakes back and forth in between the vast canyon walls? What you might not realize is that the Colorado River has helped carve the walls of the Grand Canyon over millions of years of erosion. This is an example of how natural waterways shape the physical world that we live in today. The topic of erosion is particularly important to humans when it comes to urban planning and agriculture and is something you will spend a great deal of time on when you analyze different types of soil, their textures, their composition, how soil is formed, porosity, and their erosion rate just to name a few. In your second or early third year, you will take a closer look at physical geography, rock types, and mineral types. For example, you would learn about the three classes of rock, which are sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic, and the differences among them and how they are formed. You would learn that sedimentary rock is formed from particles of sand, shells, pebbles, and other fragments or sediments, and over long periods of time and under pressure, the sediment eventually hardens into rock. Next we have igneous rock, which is formed when hot magma from the Earth's core cools and hardens. You are probably most familiar with obsidian, which is often carved into obsidian arrowheads. And lastly, there is metamorphic rock, which is made under the Earth's surface during intense heat and pressure. One example of metamorphic rock is marble. In a lab, you might be expected to analyze what type of rock you are looking at and be able to list what classification it is. In addition, in your physical geography classes, you will study the diverse types of climate on Earth, how landforms are created, and different biota, which is the animal and plant life in each region. In this type of course, when you talk about various biota, this would also be where you would go over ecology concepts. One reason you spend so much time studying rock types is because of the direct relationship various rock types have with soil types. I know all of you have heard of the term soil, but what you might not know is that soil is made up of finely ground rock particles from one of the three parent materials of rock. It's made up of plant nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, in addition to decomposed organic material and living organisms such as prokaryotes. Every soil has its own unique composition texture and is classified by size and has a unique classification. In a lab for this class, you might be given a soil sample and using soil morphologies, which is how soil is classified by name, color, structure, texture, etc., you would identify different soils. For example, identifying the soil type would be of a particular importance for a developer on a new project because different soils have varying rates of erosion and stability based on their structure. Furthermore, building on the wrong type of soil or not taking into consideration the soil you are building on leads to foundations that crack, landfills that leak, and dams that break. 
Or as far as agriculture is concerned, let's say you are a farmer who makes a living on crops. Knowing the soil type is important because the structure of the soil will affect how much air will be able to permeate the soil, as well as how much water the soil will be able to hold on to. Using this knowledge base, you will then be exposed to classes that teach you the practical applications of earth and soil sciences. As I alluded to earlier, knowing the type of soil you are building on is very important because different soils have varying stabilities. In your third or fourth year, you will take an entire course that focuses on soil erosion and learn the best management practices for agriculture, urban, riparian, which is a wetland area adjacent to a river or stream, and rangeland management. As a project, you might be given a scenario where a farmer knows he is working with a particular soil and it is your job to come up with a plan to prevent erosion and nutrient loss in his soil on his farm. Or going back to why it is important to know the structure of the soil you are building on, many of you are probably familiar with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa leans because the soil below the foundation was too soft and could not withstand the weight of the building once the weak subsoil was exposed to the wet season. Since its completion in 1372, there have been updates and restorations, however this is a perfect example of why it is imperative that project managers and developers know what type of soil they are building on before they break ground. Some soil is suitable for supporting skyscrapers, while other soil couldn't even hold the weight of a human. In your fourth year as an earth science major, you will take many courses that focus specifically on soil, including soil health and plant nutrition, soil morphology, soil ecology, environmental soil physics, and lastly, environmental soil and water chemistry. The reason you spend so much time learning about soil as an earth science major is because of the many applications the subject has in both the private and public sector. A good understanding of soil science is important for people interested in environmental conservation, agriculture, and urban planning. All these classes will have overlap, and an example of this being the case is when you learn soil morphologies. Later you learn in soil physics why the soil's physical and chemical properties impact the energy in soils and how their properties play a role in their behavior with solids, water, air, and heat. And I'm going to end there for this video, and in part two I will cover labs, concentrations of earth and environmental science, and potential careers.